Can you kind of explain that process for people that may not be aware? I know it's probably changed a little bit since you went through, but the contracting end of Ranger, do you go straight to boot camp and then right into RASP or RIP or whichever one it is, and then that follow-on training? Pretty much, yeah. You go to your basic training, and for me it was uh, OSIT, so it's your basic training and your infantry training together uh, for, I believe, 11 weeks. And then because you're on a Ranger contract, all Rangers are airborne, you go to three weeks of airborne school uh, right there at Fort Benning. And then you go down the road to uh, what was at that time called the Ranger Indoctrination Program, RIP, which was three weeks long. Mm -hmm. um, now now it's much bigger. It's uh, much more thorough. Guys receive much more training. It's called RASP, Ranger Assessment and Selection Program. I believe it's eight weeks long. Um, so guys are coming out of that much better prepared for life in Ranger Regiment. Um, but that that's still essentially the pipeline. Your basic training, uh, airborne school, and then Ranger Indoctrination or Ranger Assessment and Selection. Are you guys segregated at all in boot camp or are like all the – ranger contracts one way or are you guys just mixed in with everyone is that a thing that they pick on you about and stuff like that they they did tend to lump us all together like my if i remember correctly everyone in my basic training platoon we were all going to rip or i think 82nd or 101st like that they were they were airborne units that these guys were heading to yeah um so they yeah. did kind of lump us together but of course there are many different mos's in the ranger regiment so not everyone, of course, is going to infantry basic training. They're going to become forward observers, medics, commo guys, RTOs, whatever the case may be. So, of course, those guys are going to their own basic training in AIP and then airborne. And then they're, and then everyone's kind of coming together and going through RIP or RASP together. Interesting. I didn't. So, but they signed up under a Ranger contract as well? Correct. Yeah. So they would be like a forward mm. observer but they would have the option 40 ranger contract. So they're going, there are different MOS, but going through the same pipeline. Gotcha. See, I did, I thought, see, there you go. You learn something new every day. I thought that if you signed up for the ranger contract, it was like all the infantry skills all the way up and then going through. That's interesting. I thought, you know, like enablers, I don't know how it works with the ranger battalion. I um, guess like your enablers are part of the battalion and they go through all the training. They're not just attachments. I, when, again, back in the day, everyone went through RIP. Or if you were an officer in NCO, you went through rope. Um, they still have that. Mm -hmm. it's also, uh, so it's RASP 1 and RASP 2. So NCOs and officers are going through RASP 2. They have this, it's the same idea, but they've greatly upgraded these selection courses. Um, so, yeah, everyone's going through some sort of uh, assessment and selection process. For you, what was the hardest part you know, of this assessment and selection for – for Ranger Battalion, and what would you do differently to like prepare for that? Honestly, what kicked my ass was the ruck marching. Uh, they had us in, you know, we do like forced marches, and, and it's nothing high speed or anything per se. I mean, it's like standard weight, weighted rucksack, 12 miles. Um, and uh, not to make bullshit excuses for myself, but here's a bullshit <laughs> excuse. Uh, I, I, got, I got sick. I, I mean, I did. My, my lung had a bunch of fluid in it. And um, I kept, I failed out of the road march. And then because I got sicker and sicker, I failed that. I flunked out of the retest also. So I had to recycle, rip, and, and get on antibiotics for like five days and then start the course again on Monday and, um, and start all over again. So that, that was just very difficult. It was very frustrating because it's like, you know, you should be able to do this physically, mm -hmm. but your body won't allow you to do it because you're sick. <laughs> so it was, it was very frustrating. But, um, Overall, I'd say it was a very good course. If I was to do something differently, looking back on uh, a lot of my military training, I was always a runner. Um, I did a lot of cardio. I did a lot of um, long, long range um, endurance runs and things mm -hmm. like that. Looking back on, I probably should have integrated a lot more strength training and a lot more weight training. Um, but the, the Ranger Regiment itself, I think the culture has also changed uh, from it was it, back in the day. It was a lot of running, a lot of ruck marching, a lot of pull ups. Uh, push up, all that kind of stuff, dips on the dip bar. Now they're much more into the m more modernized, like functional fitness, um, doing deadlifts and, and all sorts of uh, strength training like that. So I think the regimen itself has also evolved and gotten much better and much smarter about how they train. Yeah, that's awesome. I, something I've seen, and as I was getting out, even the Marine Corps as a whole, you know, I think the military as a whole is starting to realize, like, hey, just beating your body up and, and working on yeah. minimal sleep over and over and over again, you know, is only effective for a little bit. And look how much more effective we could be if we actually teach guys, 
you know, it's funny, and I'm sure you've seen it too, the amount of like supplements and bullshit that dudes will put into their bodies, you know, to try to like stay ready for whatever missions or whatever they got going coming up. And it's like, dude, this is a very unhealthy way of living. And it's good that it's kind of changed a little bit. The culture's changing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, you know, again, as much as I was a long distance runner, I mean, just doing those sorts of endurance exercises is, is not 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 necessarily healthy for a, a lot of guys. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of stress fractures and injuries and things yeah. like that. Um, do, just doing like uh, really heavy ruck marches and ruck runs all the time. It, like it, it's that point of diminishing returns that maybe you use some of that stuff in selection, but you want to have a soldier, a ranger, or operator, whoever it is, um, be durable enough to have a 20 year career in the military. And, uh, some of those old ways of training are yeah, kind of obsolete. It, like you said, it seems like they've gotten a lot smarter about it. Yeah, for sure. Especially when you look at the amount of money that's put into some of these like MOSs to get the proper training and stuff. It's, it does no good to train a guy. You spend a million dollars literally to train a guy and then turn around and put him on the bench. Cause now he's beat up, you know? Um, yeah. that's gotta be one of the hardest things ever to be recycled in a school and being like, fuck, now I got to start over again. Here we go. It's a character building experience. That's how you have to look at it. Character building experience. And I think, uh, I think dealing with the uh, failure as a young man is a good thing. You know, it, it teaches you to, you know, you got to man up sometimes you got to suck it up and, and, the, and also the, the military, the army, I mean, it's pretty good about giving you a second chance to recycle or retest. Um, you know, you, you apply yourself, figure out what you're doing wrong and try to correct it. And, and they, they give you opportunities to correct yourself. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So once you finished up like Ranger, once you finished up the assessment and selection portion of it and you, you know, you're getting ready to go to the unit or maybe you're already at the unit. Does that when your actual like school pipeline starts or do you just kind of go to schools when you can and you just integrate with the unit and whatever training cycle they're in? Uh, well, when you show up at the unit is when you show up at the unit. Uh, and as you said, you, you kind of just cover down on whatever that training cycle is, wherever they are at in it. Um, uh, and you know, the, the traditional, uh, there may be other schools that you have to go to here and there, but I mean, really the, the school that everyone's focused on when you finish, uh, RIP or now RASP is you're waiting to go to Ranger school and you want to go to Ranger school as quickly as possible because until then you're basically, I mean, you are a forever private essentially in oh, Ranger. Really? Yeah, yeah. In order to hold any sort of leadership position to move up the ranks at all, you're going to have to graduate from Ranger School as well. So everyone who is a, uh, a, a private in Ranger Battalion is kind of fighting to get to Ranger School <laughs> as quickly as possible. That's interesting because I, I was one of my questions was going to be, you know, if that was even a priority going to Ranger School, because I know there's like a difference, you know, and some people don't understand there's a difference between Ranger Battalion and going to Ranger School and that it's a leadership school that anybody in the army can go to and, and even in the Marine Corps, you know, we send guys to it and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting that you have to do that to even move up. What kind of, it probably helps too to go to it right after you get done with your assessment selection. You're probably in the best shape you could be in to go do something like that. Um, yeah, yes and no. Um, you're right. You're in good shape. You're going to be kept in shape as a, as a young ranger, regardless. So yeah. they, they're, they're going to PT you pretty hard. Um, but Ranger school uh, is, you know, focusing on small unit tactics, uh, filling those squad leader and platoon sergeant PL positions and learning how to do that job. Uh, as a young PFC and Ranger battalion, you don't necessarily have the benefit of um, knowing, having any pre-existing knowledge before you go to Ranger school because you've never, you've never done the job. You've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. uh, you've never seen your leadership do that job before. So you don't necessarily understand it. And... Um, I can speak to this firsthand because I did get sent to Ranger school very quickly. Um, and it, there were good things and bad things about it. And, you know, the bad thing was I had no idea what I was doing. I was, I was completely lost. Um, I was probably the youngest uh, person there with no idea what was going on. Um, but on the positive, it was a good learning experience, right? Yeah, for sure. The culture shock continues, you know.